we Aidan? At the Farm and Four Wheel Drive Expo at Freeling. Yes. Come for a little drive to Freeling today to check out this expo. It's a much smaller version of the York Peninsula Day that we did. When was that? Late last year? October. Yeah, October last year. So, um, just going to have a little look see around at all the farm gear um, and all sorts that's in here today. And then we're staying locally tonight so that we can have a look around these cute little towns that are here. So, off we go. Yep. Time for some fun, <laughs> fun. <laughs> So for those of you that haven't seen the sheep being shorn before, Jono's sheep shearing services. Showing everyone how it's done. I just can't imagine doing that all day. He's a really tall guy too, so bending over. He's fit as fiddles these guys. Always really interesting to watch. Can you imagine doing that for hours and hours every day in the heat and stuff? It amazes me. Mm. Heat doesn't look too worried. I reckon I'm about due for a haircut. Maybe I can line up next. <laughs> so she's done. A couple of minutes later. And she looks great. She's so relaxed. And she's done. I don't know why, but I'm a little bit obsessed with checking out the old tractors. I don't even know anything about them. I just love looking at them. Especially the old ones which have been restored and cared for. just so cool. So this is the girl I need to be sucking up to if I want to go in that ass on the grass competition. <laughs> I don't know if you can see somewhere down there. Oh yeah she's uh, she's already been busy. Gotta to, got to choose which square she's gonna poop on. So we're ticking off the big things of Australia. This is the Cornish miner of Kapunda. Probably about, I think he's about seven or eight meters tall. And at the moment, we haven't got the best light to show you old Matt Miner. Doesn't actually say on the sign how tall he is, but I think I read in the brochure he was either seven or eight meters. Yeah, he's quite tall. He's got a good mow on him. <laughs> And then I got sidetracked by these beautiful old stone walls, which I can't decide how old, but I love this. The old pottery in them. That I love. Upcycling at its best, and then look at this. Definitely in a copper town. We're doing a bit of a main street walk at Kapunda and they have a lot of really lovely mural art on their walls depicting the history. I think a lot of it's probably quite new. So if you haven't been here for a while, it's probably worth checking out. Just thought we'd have a bit of a walk while it's a bit quieter on a Friday night. Particular mural. Mural. By Danny Menzel. Won the 2020 Best External Mural in Australia. Which is pretty cool. And I can see why. It's quite stunning. We've stopped to take in the sites of the Kapunda Mine Historic Site. Taking the sites of the site. 
Now I've driven through Kaponda many times but never taken the time to actually stop here so Aidan and I thought it would be nice just to have a night and actually take the time to have a look around properly which is what we're trying to do when we've got the time isn't it? Yep well I've never been here. You haven't been here? No. No. So they've actually been doing a lot of work to the Kapunda mine site where we're just reading about how the miners used to eat Cornish pasties and they used to um, leave this bit of the, the crust. Pasty, the crust because that's where their dirty hands with the copper on it would have been. They didn't want to ingest the copper, they tried to ingest as little as they could. But no, it would be a hard life to be one of those picky boys. So these picky boys, back in the mines day, they had to come and pick through all the remnants brought up from the mine, looking for the copper. They were paid about 11 cents per day. My goodness, look at that. 11 cents per day. And then they had to go to school for four hours a day as well. And if they didn't do that, couldn't work in the mine the next day. And they were only eight or nine years old. And they were eight or nine. So all these kids now sitting on their phones and their iPads and their little butts watching TV after school. Yep. These lads were out working in the mine at eight or <laughs> nine years old. So we're just taking this in now. You can see they're still definitely doing a lot of work here. The engine house. Yeah, they've, the council's, well, they've built this structure, I guess, to um, replicate the uh, engine house that was there. So do you think they're replicating the engine house that was there, Aidan? I think it's, well, it's built out of steel to replicate what was there. Yeah. I think that's what they finished yeah. now, looking the at the picture here, here. But um, I think sh when we were talking to the council people at the f um, farm and four wheel drive show, mm -hmm. they said it was only completed in the last two weeks. Yes, it's very new. And just down there actually over Aidan's shoulder, you can see there's new toilets going in. Um, they're definitely doing a lot of work. That's the old miners manager's house up there. Which someone obviously they also mentioned that they're putting in a archway or walkway over the open cut mine so you can walk out and see it with a clear bottom. Yes, that's going to be interesting, especially for those of us that have <coughs> little fear of heights. So this is quite interesting. Not sure what I think about that. <laughs> it's interesting, so at least it gives you a perspective of what size was there. What size the buildings were. Well, this was the engine up. house with the might to bring some of the stuff up from Winding down. Winding house, 1862. So definitely one of those spots where you do need to have your wits about you. Lots of deep mine shafts. You can definitely feel the history. You walk up here, you can see the mine shaft opening. Old ruins. Sorry, what was that? If you look down here, you can see that where the mine shaft opens. Over there in that law always fascinates me the the old wood used in the shafts you know decaying away yet men were down there <laughs> working hard with that holding up everything but they did it didn't they yep I always love the old mine chimneys. 1850, this one. 
Oh, it's just it's so stunning against the blue sky. An absolutely beautiful sculpture here of this five-scale horse. It wasn't only the humans that worked hard back in the day, but the horses did too. Oh, look. She'd make me work. Here goes a horse now. <laughs> hey, making you work. Yeah. It's quite heavy, isn't it? Bit of weight, no? Yeah. I can only imagine if it was pulling on something. And the sculpture's great. Beautiful view up here, everyone, as you can see. And this beauty is made from all bits and pieces. You've heard me say it before, but just really admire these artists that can have the vision to get these sculptures made. I do like the tail. <laughs> I was just saying to Aiden how it's amazing you go to mine sites all over Australia, Kukapiti, all sorts of places. Lightning Ridge, I noticed. Um, nature kind of always wins in the end. Everything just starts growing again when it's left alone. These look like uh, they're pepper trees down in the bottom there and it kind of just regenerate how far we've come girls were expected to marry between the ages of 14 and 16 until then they assisted in the home and many girls could not read or write and were not taught any of that oh. I don't think I was born to be in that era, love? No. <laughs> or have up to 10 plus children and... Yep, 10 plus children and be pregnant every two years. And many of the children died before 12 and many of the mothers died in childbirth. Yeah. So sad. Like a harsh life. And I think I probably would have been a feminist. You know, I would have been standing up for women's rights, <laughs> trying to get the vote, <laughs> all of those things. This is the lookout. It's actually quite pretty. It would be great to come when this is filled with water. It looks quite blue when that happens. We did see a photo of that earlier. And in some places you can kind of get the green tinge of the copper still so in case you missed it this is at Kapunda South Australia you can do the loop walk around taking the signs it's about a one and a half K walk which is you know not not a difficult walk at all is it no it's all sealed or paved yeah now that they've paved it very doable. I think this might be where the council ladies were saying they're talking about building a perspex lookout here so that you can stand out looking over the mine. What do you think of this place, Aidan? Yeah, it's quite interesting. Mm. But I suppose it takes a little bit away from it because it is so set up for tourists compared to, is it Nakalina we saw up in the Flinders? Yeah, Nakalina mine when we were there by ourselves and we're just walking around. But then again, the information is handy to have. To That's right. So it's a compromise, I suppose. Yeah. But yes, it's definitely interesting and you can see a lot of the copper still down there. Yeah. It would be good when the water is in here, wouldn't it? It'd be interesting. Yeah. 
If you haven't ever walked around where there's mine shafts before, you can see that it's really easy to get into trouble because over here we've got all the open cut section. And then as you're walking along, unless you've got your wits about you, and you will find this if you get into the old gold mines or uh, up near Cooperpedi and those places, you're just walking along and then all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, there's a huge drop. It just sinks away. So it does always pay to um, take notice of the signs. And you know, obviously where we are today, it's all fenced because we're in quite a built up mm -hmm. area. But I've been to a lot of places where there's not a fence in sight. Can we name them, Aidan? Where have you been? Kilberpedy, Lightning Kilberpedi, Ridge, White Cliffs. Lightning Ridge, yes, I've been to White Cliffs too. And they're all Oport Minings. Um, in the Adelaide, uh, we went to Nakalina Mine yeah. in the Flinders Ranges. That was just a free-for-all walk wherever you want. Uh, they did um, have a fence around the really deep one. Oh, yeah, one. That, the deep one, they had a fence. Um, um, you know, and I think you just have to take responsibility for yourself. You know, it's about being sensible. In the Adelaide Hills, there's little mines, Jupiter Creek and all of those sorts of mines. So I think back in the day, I think I would have preferred to work in this section. <laughs> the Stockyard Open Cut, 1866. Bloody freezing in winter, friggin' hot in summer. But for someone like me, a little bit claustrophobic, I think I would have preferred that. Looks like we can get down in there. Mm. See if we can get down there. Yeah, be nice if we can to see the colours. Well, let's go down and see what's down here. <laughs> well, we wouldn't be able to do this if it was full of water, would we? So well, we could probably still walk down, but we mightn't get up. <laughs> pros and cons of it being dry. End of summer, start of autumn. So we we'll spend a lot of time putting in nice big steps. Yeah, well this is what I like, is getting down to see the colours. Satisfies the non-geologist that I am. <laughs> And I think, yeah, you can see into the mines as well. Mm, Tommy Knockers, the spirit creatures of the underground. Strange sounds, darkness and dangers are present. It's quite, we were quite surprised to learn that only eight people died in this mine during its time. Sadly, a few young lads eight, nine years old, suffocation. Um, I don't know, don't you reckon this guy looks a little bit Irish? <laughs> <laughs> hey? Yeah, 302 people worked here in, men and 36 boys worked here in 1862. Yeah, there's nothing about in there that makes me want to go inside there. And we have to go and do the Blinman mine again, but I've <laughs> got to psych myself up for that. Hmm, very narrow. You wouldn't want to be very tall. Yeah, they said that really only two could fit down at a time. <laughs> They'd want to be small. And they would definitely be shorter than you. And me, actually. <laughs> I'm 5'7 and a bit. Aiden's six foot. Yep. So, yeah, I did notice there's another mine around the corner there, but we can't get to that one. But you can see the copper, the green here on the corner. Yes, there's a bit still left here. Yep. 
They do feel eerie, these places, though, don't they? Yeah. I don't know, it feels sad. Sad, sad energy. If you're an energy person, like I am. Yeah, it's just a real sadness here. Tough times. <laughs>